All right, so Lionfish Derby 2015. Uh, we missed the one last year. We wanted to go very badly, but we missed it. So I'm super excited about this year. And um, we have the opportunity to attend. I've been doing a little bit of work at IMA on it. I'll promote it a little bit. And I just, like, we're very excited to go and hunt some lionfish. So we're here today at the Institute of Marine Affairs, located in Chagramas. And today we're going to take a look at what the IMA is currently doing about the lionfish situation here in Trinidad and Tobago. And learn more about the problems associated with this invasive species. So let's go inside and take a look at what they're up to. The lionfish causes ecological damage to coral reefs and marine fisheries. Its aggressive eating and mating habits makes it a serious threat to the fisheries. It reduces populations of juvenile and small fish on coral reefs by up to 90% and causes significant decreases in the population of commercial fish such as snappers and groupers. The lionfish can be identified by its distinctive red, maroon and white stripes or bands covering the head and body. Black spots on tail, fleshy tentacles above eyes and below the mouth, fan-like pectoral fins, 13 long separated dorsal spines, 3 anal spines and 2 pelvic spines. So most of you may be wondering why the IMA wants to get rid of these fish. Well the truth is the lionfish is an invasive species, originally native to the Indo-Pacific region. And there's a couple different theories of how they got here and one of them is through the aquarium fish trade but the fact of the matter is that they're here now and they are a threat to the, our marine ecosystem. So we touched down in Tobago, um, the flight was real good, time to head to the hotel and organize gears for tomorrow. You reach. So again, across Tobago was a little bit of a scene. All the flights were booked up, but we chartered our plane. And it, it was a little expensive, but it turned out to be sick, real sick. So we touched down in Tobago. Um, the flight was real good, time to head to the hotel and organize gears for tomorrow. Reach. So, it's the day before the tournament, we have to register. Registration is in Castara, which is about halfway up the island from where we are in, in Crown Point. So, we're going to take the scenic route, take our time, check the views out and just have a good time until we get there. Yeah, we're on the Castara lookout here. We're here for the IMA's Lionfish Derby. Uh, we're here for the weekend. We're going to have some fun and do some good for the environment. Have some fun! <laughs> okay, we got to the registration. Um, we were the only first people there, I guess, because we were so excited to get this thing going. And uh, they had a lionfish set up in a tank. So it's kind of cool to see, you know, something that is not local to our waters in a tank present in our waters. They caught it apparently a couple of days before in Tobago. Just to just show people, you know, what they look like and what they're going to be looking for when you're hunting these things. So you know, the IMA crew was there and I think what was good about it, they were giving out some cool gadgets to hunt the lionfish. We got some really neat pole spares and some catch bags to put the lionfish in. And we just went through a briefing and what's going to happen, what's going to happen over the next two days and we just we got amped up for it. So 
So, I mean, they have a lot of preparation when it comes to diving. You need to make sure your mask, your fins, your wetsuit. Um, in this instance, it'll be pool spares. We're not using spare guns because pool spares is the fastest and easiest way to catch a lionfish. So that's what we'll be using. Um, they have to make sure that the tips are sharp and everything is put together properly. And so it's just all about preparation at the moment and getting ready for tomorrow. So shooting this time, this time, I am catching the smallest lionfish of the day tomorrow. Have a prize for that? Yes, I See us? So this is the first competition I've been in that they actually get a prize for the smallest fish. Let's see how that plays off. <laughs> Just looking forward to um, having a fun day with my friends, you know, free diving, crystal clear water in Tobago and hopefully we'll have an impact on the lionfish population here and have fun doing it. As soon as I spared them, I pulled them out of the water and I was screaming, Tadaz! Okay, 5 a.m. the alarm goes off. I get up and start to organize my business. Check in with Christian and Josh. It seems that they're not even up yet. And starting to put us behind already, you know? It's, it's late and we need to get we need to get going. We are in the Charlottesville. We are in Charlottesville. We're gonna do some diving. Um, catch some lionfish for the lionfish tournament. It's 5.30 in the morning. I mean, we were supposed to be there by six. I don't know how we're making this, but we will try something. We <laughs> late! <laughs> you just do it to me, Reese! We late! Let's go! As usual. Oh, oh, we late! Let's go! We arrive on location. The water looks clean. And we're gonna go lionfish hunting. Oh, what are we seeing there? Lionfish right there. <laughs> So I thought I knew where this beach was or how to get to this beach, but this road that we are on now, real narrow and it's real muddy. So we almost got stuck, we almost went over the cliff and then when we actually parked, we had to go down 150 stairs with all the equipment to get to the beach. But trust me, when we got to that beach, it was worth it. One of the most beautiful beaches I've ever been to. I've never been to Paris before to hunt the lionfish and you know these, they look really good. Everything looked really good just to, to go and shoot some lionfish. So from what I know lionfish like to congregate around structures such as reefs and rocks and anything like that. So we now came up came across our first set of rocks and um, we're hoping to find some lionfish. So I was the first in the water, super excited to get, and I, you know, everybody was telling me, wait on me, wait on me, and I just, I swam off, I just wanted to get, get in it. And maybe 50 feet off the beach was the first set of rocks, and within three minutes of looking around, there was a lionfish, and it was a big one, and spared him, and I, as soon as I spared him, I pulled him out of the water, and I was screaming, ta -da! Charles a good ways out in front of me and I saw him holding up a lionfish. I was like, yeah, I even reached the rocks yet and you know, Charles already got his first lionfish so I was excited to get there and find mine. What we realized is that these lionfish like to hang around rocks and where we're hunting is mainly sand. So, but once you find a group of rocks or a pile of rocks, you're gonna see lionfish. And after Stephanie got a couple in the bag, we moved to the next spot and we found a group of rocks. And of course, they had a lionfish. So I went down, pulled back my pool spare, line up one, and that was it. Put my first one in the bag. I'm feeling proud. <laughs> 
So Christian was diving more on the outside, in a little bit deeper water, like 40 feet of water, 50 feet of water. And myself, Josh and Stephanie were more along the coast. And every now and then I would, I would peep up above the water to see, you know, where everyone was. And I, I looked up and I saw Christian, Christian was screaming and I raced over to where Christian was. And there was this big rock in the middle of, just off in the middle of the sand, off the, off the coast. And uh, one drop on the rock and there was like maybe eight lionfish on this one stone and all of them were huge. So we were pretty lucky to find this spot. There were a lot of lionfish here and me and Chad were having a bowl loading our buckets. You know, so clearly we see that, uh, that the lionfish, are, they seem to be taking over parts of the area, you know, every single rock is lionfish. And then, you know, you realize what IMA is, is pushing and what they're promoting is how important it really is, you know, to the ecosystem of Pirates Bay. You know, the day, the day were go was going on and you were diving and shooting lionfish one after the next and you're not really seeing any other life. You know, normally you would see a lot of different fish, but it just seemed that it was just all lionfish everywhere. So Christian, I'm looking at Christian like, Christian, what are we going to do? And he's like, well, we have to go to shore. We need to, we need to offload because we have no more room. So we, we swam to shore and there were these rock clusters we found and we climbed up on the shore and we emptied our buckets and took all the lionfish and hit them under some leaves. And we had two piles of lionfish just there on, under the rocks. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. So we went back to the rocks where we, where we put our lionfish catch before and so I had to offload our buckets again and we're looking at like, oh my, look at the amount of lionfish we have and how, how are we going to get these back? And we started looking around and we see these vines hanging down from the trees. So I start to pull one down and pull out my knife and cut a vine and start to thread the lionfish on the vine. And Christian started to do the same thing. And we had basically two strings of lionfish and we couldn't hunt anymore because we had these strings of lionfish we had to take back to shore. So we swam back to show the strings of lionfish and two of us just stood there and the long strings of lionfish oh, behind us. It's amazing the amount of lionfish they have out there. Myself and Christian only hit like basically one spot and we filled up the buckets in about five minutes and we ordered room and so we had to go to shore, get a vine, and Christian has another. <laughs> I get take risks. So you know we're hunting these lionfish and you have to be careful because they have venomous spines around their body. And especially ones on the dorsal fins, they're the biggest ones. And um, Christian was putting one in his bucket and <laughs> he was pushing it in and I just saw him pull his hand back and started to hold his hand. And I, I, I just started to laugh because I already, you already know what happened, he got stung. Myself and Christian got stung from the lionfish, but it's okay. It's a nice thing. It's a nice thing. <laughs> All four times that. Myself and Christian it's in a cool hundred today. Yeah. We have about almost 40. Yeah, more than that. Almost 40. Almost 50, yeah. So we hit any hundred. You gotta get done. So we reached back on the beach and Steph and I realized that Christian and them load. We had a catch up. So we decided we're going to a new location to try and catch up to these fellas. Alright, so myself and Christian, we are diving together, Josh was diving with Stephanie, and we hit the mother load. It was really fun, we gathered about 40, and yeah, it was, I mean, Lionfish Derby, 2015. Charlottesville jet ski and there was a bunch of other people there around and they went to see what we caught and we start pulling out our line fish and start comparing and, uh, and you know, I realized I had this moment on the board.
How was your last dive? It was fun again. Lots of lionfish. Josh got a couple. He got a couple. I got a couple. Just finished the last dive. Time is drawing close. You know, we are going to have an hour to get back to the Castara for the win. So we got to the weigh station and it's a lot more people than I originally anticipated. Obviously the event is doing well and I can't wait to see how we do. You know all the competitors are coming in, the table, the judging table is already full with lionfish from competitors, you know they're measuring and all the INA staff is there. And you're talking to everyone about the lionfish, you know, all the education tidbit going on, you know, and talking about the cook-up, how they're going to cook everything up for tomorrow. And, you know, we're just excited to get our fish to the weight table, you know, to just excited to see how we did. Right, so uh, what I recommend, you hold it by the head, right. I mean, experience with it. Right. Pull it from here, all the, all the venomous spines on top, they're actually, this is the dorsal, right. yeah, so this front fit in here, right. all right, um, on the, these two here. the pelvic, so you have one on each side, and on right. the anal you have three here. It's three on the anal. Three on the anal, so you have three right. short ones here, right. um, two on the pelvic, one on each side, and fit in the dorsal. Cool. All right, the pectoral layer, harmless, soft and fleshy. All well, the ones with the club. These ones here, soft and touchy, soft and touchy. Cool. Harmless. My recommendation is to cut them the other direction from that way because you see how they all fold back that way. So we're at the weigh station, there's a lot of action going on. What they're doing is measuring the fish. So they're showing you how to properly handle the fish and how to properly measure the fish. And of course, what spines to look out for, which are the venomous ones and which are the non-venomous ones. And I think they have some cooking going on too. Men hungry. <laughs> so as you would have seen from yesterday when we were despining the fish, we took the spines off and then we gave each restaurant the whole fish. So they filleted the fish and seasoned it up. So this is the result before it goes in the pot. So as part of the day, really, I am a prepared line fish for tasting and there were different styles and one of my favorite actually was a curry line fish with taste, which tastes really, really good. And this is actually my first time eating line fish. So we had the prize given and it's actually broken up into two categories. One is free diving, which of course we entered, and one is scuba diving. So they have the prizes for the scuba diving and the prizes are gross weight, which is the total amount of lionfish. Um, and then they have the biggest fish and smallest fish. So the, the tournament has come to an end and hats off to the Institute of Marine Affairs. They put on a fantastic event. It was super fun. We do from shore, you know, you don't need much shallow water diving, you know, your pools for your catch bag and lionfish everywhere. You know, it's really good to do our part to, to help clean up the environment a little bit, give back to the native fish, have them catch back. And I hope I may put it on next year and we'll be there for sure. If you see or catch a lionfish in our coastal waters, these details will be useful. Date of sighting or capture, location and depth of sighting or capture, size of fish, fish behavior, for example, hunting or hiding. Please contact the IMA at 634-4291.